Tonight, we'll take a look at the SGA officer candidate debates. Plus, middle school students took over the city of Troy today. Stay tuned, Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. From the worldwide campuses of Troy University, this Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello and welcome to Trojan Vision Nightly News for February 22nd, 2011. I am Rachel Ellis. And I'm Jasmine Bailey. Thank you for joining us this evening. Tomorrow, Troy University students will get to decide who the leadership for Troy Student Government Association will be for next year. But, but before the voting begins, they have a chance to get to know the candidates courtesy of Trojan Vision. Rachel Scarborough has the story. On Monday night, candidates for the upcoming SGA elections came to the Trojan Vision TV studio to take part in a debate. I think it went really well. All the candidates definitely put on their game face and they definitely came out and put forth their best foot and it was really fun. I've never been anything like this before so it was a great experience overall regardless of what the outcome is going to be. Candidates were able to introduce themselves and answer questions that were submitted by either students or other SGA members. A good debate. Uh, there was a lot of good responses, a lot of good questions, uh, and you know it was a little nerve-wracking at first. Not gonna lie, but uh, it was it was good. I enjoyed it. Uh, it was a good experience too. So. Although the TV debate reached a broad audience, some candidates would like the opportunity to talk directly to the students. I think the debates, especially for SGA executive officers, should uh, be open um, to the entire student body, and um, so they can actually ask the questions that. Um, really concerns them to make it a little more personal. Supreme Court Justice Tyler Pig tells us when and where the elections will take place on Wednesday. 8 to 5 in the Trojan Center uh, in room 215 in the SJ office. Uh, Supreme Court will be there along with other senators to uh, take your ID and we will allow you to vote online so please come and uh, you have a great slate of candidates here for this university. Rachel Scarper, Troy, Trojan Vision News. If you want to watch the debate in its entirety, it will air right after this newscast at 5.30, then again at 7, 8, 9, and 11. It can also be viewed on the Trojan Vision website. Go to troy.edu, scroll down to the information quick link, and click on Trojan Vision. Then click on the SGA debate link on the right side of the page. The election will be tomorrow from 8 to 5 in the SGA office on the second floor of the Trojan Center. Well, seventh graders usually think about what they're having for lunch or after school activities. But for a group of local middle school students, bigger things were on the brain. I had an opportunity today to follow seven students around the city of Troy who wanted to be in charge. Instead of raising their hands in classrooms, these seventh graders were the ones answering the questions. The annual Mayor for a Day program gave seven middle school students a chance to see what it's like to run the city and make big decisions. They toured several locations around the city of Troy, including the police and fire departments. The students were chosen after writing an essay on what they would do if they were mayor. I wrote my essay about making Troy a more beautiful place, a place that people will want to come, will enjoy. Bring in money and people to Troy by building new places to attract more people. Making Troy a bigger place add more entertainment, make the population bigger. Troy needs more money and more attractions. Most of the students wanted to discuss growth and the development of new places, while a few others had some different ideas for the city. I hope to open um, Troy's eyes to bigger situations that most people look over, such as the Veterans Center. Most people don't think about that because it's not them but they have bought for us and they need somewhere to come home and can rest their head and know that they're fine. Having a humane society, I know we're trying to build one, but I think we need to put it in motion because there are a lot of stray animals on the street. There was stuff about building a new library. Well, we already have a library. We should focus more on stuff that we don't have yet. So I'm hoping that that will be passed. Preserve our history. Do what's best for the city of Troy and the people. The intelligent 12-year-old said they enjoyed the trip around Troy and are glad they were chosen for this opportunity. I feel really good because I feel like I'm being listened, like maybe my idea will actually be pushed towards being like 
accepted. It was really fun meeting what our men do on the streets and how to keep the city safe. I've learned a lot about the city of Troy, about how our systems work. It makes me feel very excited. It's an honor. All local middle schools were represented in the program. The students are at the city council meeting right now discussing their issues in their essays. With only one full week left, Black History Month is drawing to a close. That's right, Rachel. But one Troy University organization didn't want the month to end without leaving the students with a little lesson in black history. Derrica James has the story. Monday night, the African American Alliance had their annual event, A Night of Color. Triple A used this event to showcase prominent African Americans and celebrate black culture. This year, they decided to do things a little bit different than usual. The Night of Color program is something that was basically created when the organization was founded. So it's something that they've done every year, and each year, you know, we try to make it bigger and we try to make it better. But this year, uh, we pretty much decided that, you know, step away from tradition and just honor, you know, phenomenal black people. Instead of, you know, making this big elaborate program, um, we decided, you know, just decided to keep it pretty much personal. The event ranged from organizations giving presentations on influential African Americans that was a part of their group to showing how far black culture has come. Some participants tell us what they learned from the presentation. Yeah, I really didn't know that there was more black men in college than in prison. I mean, that's really something that I really paid attention to. It has inspired me to do, but not only to do, but to help other men that are, you know, trying to decide what they want to do with their lives, you know, that we can, you know, keep the numbers growing and coming to school and being in college and being successful. I got a couple names, especially the, um, the establisher of... I'm sorry, February, February, that's Black History Month. I didn't know that name. Um, I got to go do some more research about that particular person, so. Um, I really enjoyed J.E.'s presentation, which is why I asked him to come back again this year. He did something similar last year, and I think it's just kind of interesting. And, you know, it's not regular, it's not typical, so I, that's my favorite part of it. Riley says the event was a great success, but there are some things that she thinks they will include next year. Um, just more, I would guess, entertainment. Uh, that's something that we kind of strayed away from this year, but, you know, just see more entertainment. Derrica James, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The next Black History Month event for Troy will be the reenactment walk held by the NAACP Thursday night at 7 o'clock. And now taking a look at news from around the state. A 33-year-old mother of three is accused in Decatur of raping two teenage boys. Police say Stephanie White Piner is charged with second-degree sodomy, two counts of contributing to the delinquency of a minor, and nine counts of second-degree rape. The charges involve a 15-year-old and a 14-year-old. Police say